What is up guys, 70 Savage here bringing you another video. Today we have an exciting day. We are going to be getting the ceiling installed inside of the van. All right, so the material that I am using for the ceiling paneling is these tongue and groove cedar planks. I just got these at Home Depot. Uh, they're pretty cheap, they're a quarter inch thick, and as you can see, they have the little tongue and groove so they can fit together. So the process here of getting these cedar planks stuck to the roof is pretty straightforward. Um, I have a bunch of these little magnets that I got on Amazon. They're neodymium magnets. And uh, as long as you get something of these dimensions or a little bit bigger, you should be good in terms of holding power. I'm gonna use the Forstner bit here on the drill to drill into each of the measured spots that maps to the roof ribs sticking horizontally across the roof. Um, and I'll place a magnet in there with some glue and that'll keep this guy stuck up onto the ceiling. You're also gonna need something like this, an energy drink. I personally chose a yerba mate, anything like a Red Bull um, or something with high amounts of caffeine and other stimulants uh, to get you through the day. One of the cool parts about cedar is that it's ridiculously light. I mean, this could be a, a sheet of cardboard if you were blindfolded. So let's go ahead and get started drilling the first couple of holes for the magnets in this cedar plank. All right, so we got our first pine board here. For now, before actually gluing the magnets, I just stuck them on with tape. All right, so as you can see right there, it just clicked right into place and it holds pretty well. All right, so I just finished the first couple rows of planks here uh, in terms of cutting them to the right length and gluing the magnets into the right spots so that they connect at the ribs. Let's go ahead and put these into the van and see how they look. Looking pretty good. Um, it's pretty strong. I mean, obviously if I pull on it, it's gonna come down, but that's kind of the idea uh, so that I can access the wires above whenever I need to. So lesson one learned along the way here, uh, it's actually better to drill these holes with the Forstner bit, not as deep as at least I was originally drilling them. Um, I have them about a 16th of an inch deep here. That allows the magnet to stick up about, you know, another 16th of an inch and it sticks much better to the rails across the top of the roof. Lesson two that I've learned is that it's definitely beneficial to mark each piece with uh, the rows and the columns that they're located. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm at G right now and then one, two. It's actually pretty beneficial to use only two slats per uh, column, I guess you can call it. If you do two pieces and you kind of stagger like the short piece on that side for one column, the short piece on that side for the next column, then it allows the structure to be quite strong. Another tip here is cut the pieces a little bit long on the side that goes towards the front of the van. Um, that's going to allow it to kind of creep above this panel right here. And this panel is held on very securely by the pins. So uh, it'll just provide a little bit of extra strength on the front portion of the slats. All right, so I just covered the lights up. This might be a little bit difficult to see, but this is the fan with about 80% um, coverage of wood so far and what I've been doing is as I'm going I'm tracing out the line of the fan duct so that um, I can go ahead and cut this out later. Now it is time to start jigsawing out the um, cutout for the fan hole. All right guys, moment of truth. It is time to see if the fan cover fits in the hole that we traced out. Sweet. So obviously I still have to cut it to the right uh, height here, but the fan cover fits perfectly. All right, so now I have six of these puck lights that I wanna drill holes for in um, the ceiling panels using this circular hole saw bit. After sanding the inside of that hole, I can just drop the puck light in and it fits nice and snug into this plank. All the hard stuff is done. Now we'd have to finish this last section up here um, to cover the rest of the roof. All right guys, we finally made it. The entire roof is cut out and uh, templated for the ceiling here. It's all stuck on with magnets, temporarily with tape. And uh, fun fact, we ended on column P, P for psyched. So get psyched. Time to pull all these guys down and onto the fun part, staining it. 
So what I did here was a little stain test. I got, um, I guess, six different versions of stain uh, from different stores, different colors, and I tried them all out to kind of see what would look the best in the van. So um, I have a Minwax dark walnut here, which is decent. Uh, it's probably hard to see, but it's kind of yellow in person. A little bit too yellow for my liking. I have a uh, Varathane dark walnut. It's not very dark. A Varathane espresso, surprisingly still not very dark. Uh, I have a, a Varathane Jacobian here. Also don't really like the color that much for my application. Um, I got this stuff on Amazon. It's Simon. Uh, I got the dark walnut color. I was actually about to go with this. Um, this is the second coat. This is the first one coat. This is two coats. Uh, this one actually looks pretty good against like my floor here and with my walls and cabinet color. Um, but then last second I tried this one from Home Depot. It's a, it's a Varthane Premium. Uh, the color is called Kona. And this one looks by far the best in my application. Um, it matches the floor really well. It's nice and dark. It's gonna give the exact look that I'm going for. So before we can actually get to staining, uh, we have to sand down each one of these planks individually. Each plank has a exterior facing surface and an interior facing surface. Only one of them is actually finished. Um, so for the one that's, that's going up against the roof itself, the one that you're not gonna see, I'm probably gonna um, do kind of a rough sanding, maybe with some 120 grit. Get it smooth enough so that I can apply uh, a sealant to it, but it doesn't need to be smooth enough to look perfect. And then this side, the finished side, is already actually finished pretty well from the factory, but I am gonna go over it with a, uh, a 150 or a 180 grit, um, just to get that nice final polish so that it can soak up the stain really well. It's gonna be quite a bit of sanding today. So, got the headphones on and uh, gonna be jamming out. All right guys, we finally finished sanding all of the planks and now it is time to go ahead and start staining them. Staining is brutal, holy cow. It's very time sensitive, so you have to wipe it off within three minutes or else it comes out inconsistently darker with the rest of them. Overall, I think it came out pretty good. All right, so now that we're done with staining, the next thing to do is coat it uh, with a little bit of sealant here. I chose to use uh, polyurethane. All right, so at this point, I have all of the planks sealed on both sides. There's two coats on the back side, and there's only one coat of sealant on the front side. I'm using a 320 grit sanding block for this, and I'm just giving it a real light sand. Um, just enough to kind of barely scuff the surface and make it really, really smooth to the touch, but not too much. Not too much to the point where you're sanding into the stain and, and causing it to discolor. So it's a bit of an art. Um, let's see how it turns out. So I actually snuck in one final coat. I ran into a problem that I didn't even really realize was a problem. I actually stumbled on this by accident, but I was originally using brushes that look like this. And then for my last coat, I ran out of brushes. So I went back to the hardware store and got a brush that looks like this. Um, there's actually a massive difference in these two brushes in terms of how they can apply polyurethane. Essentially, this brush is very flimsy, very weak. I got a whole pack of these things for like $1.50, whereas this brush on its own was $3, and it's just way sturdier. It allows you to put just a, a very, very thin coat of polyurethane that's equally distributed, whereas this one, you have to kind of lay it on thick for it to even stick to the wood at all. So uh, buy a brush like this for your coats of polyurethane and you're gonna end up with a much better finish. So with that more expensive, thicker, denser brush, um, I was able to get that final 10% of perfection out of the final coat here. As you can see on these pieces now, the finish looks really, really good. It's just super glossy smooth. Um, it almost feels fake. Like that's how smooth it is. All right, very quick test fit. Uh, I placed all the magnets in the locations that they're going to be in. There's no glue in them yet. Just making sure that A, I have enough magnets, B, that the holes are still the right size. And now we are ready to go.
So before committing to the epoxy, I actually tried um, three different adhesives out based on some research online for how to glue magnets to wood. Um, I tried super glue, just regular Loctite super glue. This is like a, they call it a flexible adhesive. I'm pretty sure it's like some sort of silicone adhesive, but it says industrial grade. Um, and then the epoxy. This did not work at all. These came off like pretty much within 24 hours. This one um, seems to work decently. Actually, it's in the wood right here. But when I left it out for a few nights, um, one of these actually came off, which frightened me because maybe it has to do with kind of condensation and stuff like that, which there will be a lot of in the van. So then I went ahead and tried this stuff that pulled out the big guns with the five minute epoxy. And um, it basically holds like a rock. Like I don't even think it would be possible to get these magnets out of this wood, uh, no matter how I tried. It holds up to 4,000 PSI. And these boards weigh like two pounds, so I don't know how much PSI that equates to, but I think 4,000 should be enough. So this is gonna be a bit challenging. Uh, I've set all of the magnets alongside the holes that they belong in, so that I can very quickly put a dab of this in, push the magnet down, move on to the next one. If you let this stuff sit in the tube for you know the five minute cure time that it takes to harden, um, that renders your epoxy useless. All right, we're about to crack the old epoxy here. Time to shine, let's see how it goes. Good news, all the magnets have dried, all the epoxy has cured. Um, they worked out really, really well, actually. Out of all of these planks here, only two of the magnets didn't adhere, um, and both of them were actually due to my fault, not due to the epoxy. One of them um, I put on way too late. I realized that the epoxy had cured and I forgot to place the magnet, so I came back like five minutes later and tried to shove it in. Um, obviously, that didn't work so well. And then the other one, I simply just forgot to put epoxy in it at all. So uh, <laughs> that one didn't stick either, surprisingly. Now I have all these planks laid out on the floor in front of me, kind of in alphabetical order of where they're actually going to be in the van. Um, so it is time for the final hurrah, and I am going to start placing these planks back into the van. All right, guys, so I am super psyched about this. It is time to reveal the ceiling. Done it. Dana, Dana, Dana. Boom, shakalaka. Here we go. Ceiling is 100% completed. I am super stoked with how it turned out. It looks, dare I say, professional. Professional for an amateur, at least. This is kind of how it looks with everything else in the van. It complements the, you know, the dark floor and the butcher block very nicely. These lights actually work as well. Give it a nice little cabin vibe in here. All right guys, so all in all, it took me about um, a week and a half of work to do this. Obviously not working the entire time. I still have a full-time job, so I work in between that, but it was quite the effort getting this thing done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, the wood grain is just like, super clear through the uh, polyurethane and the stain that I used and it just complements the van so well. It's starting to look like an actual home instead of uh, some sort of construction site. Um, so anyways, if you like this video and you're interested in seeing more updates to the van, more build guides, don't forget to subscribe and like and uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. I love answering your guys' questions. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you next time.